recorded live from the secret underground lair of Crimson Cowl Comics and Collectibles, this is the Crimson Cowl Comic Club Podcast. The following issues may contain spoilers. Welcome to a very special Crimson Cowl Comic Club creator interview. I'm Anthony. I'm David. I'm Kirby. And I'm Katie. Welcome to this very special episode because we have three special comic creator guests from the creative team of Jungle Drama, a brand new comic book that is coming out in October of 2023. We have a returning guest here, Troy Dungara. How's it going, sir? Good. How are you? I am great. Then we have uh, Eric Marshall. How are you? Hello, guys. How are you? I am good. And we Hello. have Danny Harrell. Hey. Welcome. Hi there. So here we are. This is the creative team of Jungle Drama. To give a little uh, insight on who these people are, uh, Troy Dungara, uh, creator of Kid Slapshot, co-creator and member of Cartoonist by Night, one of my favorite shows on YouTube. And also, he is the creator and writer of Jungle Drama, the comic that we are here to talk about. And then, uh, let's see here. Now, you kind of wonder, we have we have Troy Dungara doing the writing duties. So he's not doing the drawing duties this time around. So we have artist Eric Marshall and colorist and editor Danny Harrell. So that is the setup for the creative team of Jungle Drama. So here we go, folks. Now... I want to start with Troy first, kind of wondering where this comic came from. Basically, the if you can remember the origin of you having an idea to tell the story about a couple of, uh, you know, jungle girls having some jungle drama. Nope. <laughs> All right. So that'll be the end of the interview, folks. Thank you. Pre-order the comic. Okay. So let's start a little bit more. Now, there is some influence here uh, per yes. the uh, synopsis of the book. Uh, kind of talking yeah. about how it has uh, some flavor of some Archie. You know, you get a Betty Veronica yeah. Archie type of vibe from it. Uh, there's a couple other things like that. You get a Tarzan vibe. You know, there might be a reason yeah. why I'm wearing the shirt on this episode here. Um, so let's start with that there. You definitely have some influence. Um, how did you get to uh, right. Jungle Drama? So uh, Tarzan is one of the earliest... Um, well, Edgar Rice Burroughs is one of the earliest writers that I actually got into reading. Um, not just the Tarzan stuff, but the um, uh, Warlord of Mars and uh, Pellucidar, which is like a land before time type of thing. Um, so I, I really got into that when I was younger, uh, especially when I was, um, I had trouble learning how to read and reading for me kind of didn't click until the end of middle school, early part of high school. Before that, I had a lot of difficulty. Um, and uh, anyway, some of the first novels that I ever read was around that time, and it was a lot of Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff. So that kind of gave me a love of the, um, um, you know, the jungle, the savage type of uh, thing. And then um, later on in life, um, much, much later on in life, not even, you know, in my adult years, I was exposed to the Archie and the Betty and Veronica, um, things like that, as well as things like Love and Rockets, um, things like, uh, Scott Pilgrim, you know, all those things. Um, and just, it kind of, a few years ago, 
it kind of was just an idea that popped in my head you know what if what if these uh, what if some characters like in Tarzan's world were living like this teenage drama type of thing and uh, so I drew one up and that's what I sent to Eric and uh, maybe future Anthony I can send you some pictures of it and you can show it but it was very much it was very much um Eric would you say it kind of looked Scott Pilgrimy? Yeah. Do you yes, think the do you think the sample that I sent you was kind of like a Scott Pilgrim type of look to yes. it? Yes, and uh, but the uh, the idea of what would be better was you know Betty and Veronica, um, Archie Jughead, those guys would look better, and um, I have n I don't even remember how I found Eric because he posts a lot of really fine art portrait things. He doesn't post a lot of his cartoon work, but somehow we got to talking, and he sent me some underdog pages and i was like oh wow this is amazing uh can we can we do something and uh got it uh got danny involved with it and danny has that same uh danny i don't know if it's archie style coloring or cartoonish coloring i don't know how to describe it but it just it blends really well with Eric's artwork. Um, and then once Eric started doing the, uh, like the samples, I was like, okay, I'm, I can write this like that. And it, it came out, I think I wrote it like within a week. Um, and then Eric was just knocking the pages out left and right. And then Danny was knocking the coloring out left and right. Then when I finally lettered it, um, I broke, I think Danny's brain probably exploded with all the errors that I had, you know, all the typos that I had. <laughs> uh, he he did good. Um, and it, it came together that the, the two of them, like as an art team, just meshed so, so well that there was little, I had very little to do with it other than just coming up with a gag you know, a gag here and there about two girls fighting over the same jungle hunk type of thing. Which is what I was going to get to, and assuming I'm pronouncing it right, with uh, Chama and Lana, is that correct? Yeah. So Chama and Lama, uh, Lana are the two uh, main characters who are uh, fighting over uh, Jack. Jack is our uh, jungle boy hunk who kind of comes into the jungle, and they're both kind of fighting over him. He definitely has a bunch of other ladies that are, uh, you know, uh, vying for his affection and all that kind of stuff, too. And uh, so the whole setup and concept of this idea is, like you said, kind of bringing all of that kind of drama from that inspiration you mentioned and bring it into a jungle setting, which, uh, you know, we we all had the pleasure of reading it here. Um, I've told Troy this a couple of times, uh, saying how hilarious I think the book is. I think it's just such a, a solid first issue. Um, so yeah, you kind of touched on it a little bit about the um, about connecting with Eric and Danny. But the one thing before we get into that, I want to ask you is, what made you decide that you were just going to do the writing duties on it beyond that initial kind of concept sketch? Like, did you go into this project thinking, you know, I, I don't have either the time or the chops for it? Or did, were you looking for a, a project to actually work with other people, if you can talk on that? I don't have the pro the chops for it. Um, there's certain things that I'm good at drawing, and there's certain things that I'm not good at drawing. Um, and to make this the best that I think it could be, it needed somebody with Eric's skill level. Um, I think you know, I'm I'm okay. You know, with I'm good at certain things, but I'm not right there, and that's where Eric. Eric was on this, you know, for this particular project, he was a step above what I would have been able to accomplish. So um, I didn't want to put something out that was going to be 
eh. you know, I, w I wanted something that would be good. And I, I didn't feel like I was capable on the art front of it. I didn't think I was going to be able to pull it off. All right. So one thing I want to go through here is kind of show some examples for the, the people who are watching at home, just kind of going through uh, some of the art. Uh, so like I said, we had uh, the access to uh, read the comic, but what people will be seeing here will be uh, some letterous uh, pages here, just kind of showing some previews of the opening uh, pages of the issue. Just kind of going through and seeing, you know, the the style and people have an idea of what they're looking for. Sometimes when you are uh, going through comics online, you don't, you know, maybe be on the cover. You don't get a lot of examples for the art and everything. Um, so, uh, well, we'll go through a couple of these here just to kind of show that off. And then we are going to jump over to the next uh, creative uh, portion of this team. I got one more page here to show off. Once again taking that idea of a Betty and Veronica type, them kind of getting ready for the day. There's a lot of good jokes just about the, you know, the kind of jungle wear that they have and you really set the scene. And I, I think just very comedic throughout without it being too over the top. Like it still fits in kind of like a realistic type of, you know, it's not too much, uh, uh, you know, you know, eye winking or kind of fourth wall breaking minus the narrator thing there. But uh, for the most part, you know, it, it stays, you know, pretty, pretty set in the jungle. So, yeah, that is a couple uh, pages there to kind of show it off. So now you you talked about this It is part of my question here, uh, asking how you found Eric Marshall for this project. And as you said, you don't really remember how that happened. Going through Eric Marshall's art on his Instagram page, yeah, yeah, you'll see very realistic styles. Some of the examples I will be showing once we jump over to Eric. Uh, but yeah, like he said, with the cartooning that, you know, it's, you look at both of those styles, you wouldn't necessarily think that the same person did both of those based on the kind of sketch art and everything that Eric's been doing. So since you don't exactly remember that, uh, let's jump over to Eric. Uh, Eric, if you want to uh, talk about uh, the reaction to, if you remember, uh, Troy contacting you, if there's anything you can speak on uh, with uh, Troy reaching out to you and approaching you with this project, go ahead. Okay, mm, I was just crawling into the, the Instagram in my Instagram account and I saw a post about somebody was looking for a comic book artist and then I entered to, into the Troy account and then I sent a, mes a message uh, to sorry I'm not good enough with the English but could you please help me Troy yeah so uh Troy you had yeah. sent a message uh, yeah. to him oh I was uh, could, could you tell me the translation yeah I'll try go ahead okay just saw in Instagram estaba checando mi, mi cuenta y, y de repente vi un post de Troy en el que estaba buscando un, un artista de cómics y este yo no recuerdo realmente cómo fue que, que seguía a Troy en las redes sociales pero pues vi su, su, su post y pues decidí mandarle mensaje ok uh, he, uh... He was just cruising through his um, his uh, Instagram account. I had put out a post that said I was looking for an artist and describing what I was looking for. And I think I kind of described that I was looking for an Archie type style on there. Uh, he responded to me. He also doesn't remember exactly what was said back and forth. <laughs> but, uh, you know, af after we got to talking, we decided that uh, we would go go forward with the project i do remember he sent me um uh underdog uh drawings to show that he could do cartoon stuff and then he sent me sketches of the characters that were just kind of like they blew my mind i do remember that that much realmente yo no estaba dentro de los cómics yo solamente hacía retratos eh pues 
comisiones que me pedían los chicos aquí en México, pero realmente yo no posteaba nada sobre cómics. Yo no hacía nada de, de historieta. En algún momento tuve un proyecto, pero no fue un proyecto tan grande. Y uh, I, yo creo que tengo, pero posiblemente que no, no entiendo perfectamente. Entonces dime si, si lo que estoy diciendo es, es, no está correcto, ¿ok? Ok. Uh, he, he uh, wasn't doing anything with comics at the time. Wasn't really looking for something in comics. He was doing a lot of portraits and commission work. But, um, you know, if he was going to do a comic thing, he was not looking for something big at the moment. But it just happened. Is that okay? Is that, yes. That be in there? Suficiente. Right place at the right yeah. time. Sounds yes. like. So yeah. yeah. Uh, another yes. question. Another question for Eric. Uh, going through your work and seeing uh, a lot of traditional artwork with your sketch cards, which I'm going to start to show off for for people. Um, you've also done some digital work as well. Uh, can you talk about if you prefer one or the other? or maybe what you like about traditional physical art and what you like about digital art. As you talk about it, I'm going to show some examples. So feel free to talk about it. ¿Qué, qué prefiere de arte tradicional o digital? I prefer traditional artwork because, you know, you can try with the ink, the brush, the pencil, And, no sé, realmente creo que John Drama fue mi primer proyecto en el que trabajé tradicional, eh, digo, digital, fue el primero, pero yo realmente prefiero trabajar con materiales tradicionales. He prefers to work with traditional art um, over, over uh, digital art. And I'll continue to show some of those sketches. But uh, as I was going through, we're seeing some DC superheroes here. But uh, the one that's not pictured is uh, a character who I think is maybe a big uh, fan favorite of Eric, uh, Superman. As I go through Eric's Instagram page, I see a lot of Superman, whether it's him wearing a Superman costume as a young child. And maybe five years later, 10 years later, there's what looks like every stage of his life that Eric, you're wearing a Superman shirt and getting to meet some of the creators and the actors and you've definitely done some Superman art. Can you talk about uh, why you like Superman or what draw you drew you to Superman in the first place? Superman was my first superhero. The first time I met Superman, I was like four years old. My daddy gave me the whole Superman stories and the first one i read was the death and return of superman i remember john mcdonald's artwork tom brumet and dan georgians but my favorite one is john mcdonald i love his artwork and he's like a teacher for me i i met john when i was 12 years old so yeah that's why superman is my favorite superhero and also i i remember that when i was just a little kid I used to love the the Superman shield because me recordaba a una cara, me recuerda como una cara. It seems like a face. Here is the the smile. I think the Superman logo is like a smile. I don't know. That's what I love Superman. I kind of like it. It is a cool it's a cool logo. I kind of like that because a lot of people they'll say, you know, that the S stands for hope, but honestly, I like the idea that the S stands for smile. So that, that's what I'm going to go with from uh, here on out. I kind of like that. I never thought about I remember, that. But, yeah. I remember John Byrne used to say that Superman shield is like two fishes, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's how I draw it. Yeah. You know, whenever two I do fish. it, I, I draw those shapes, not the When S. I draw a Superman shield, I just think, you know, smile, it looks like a smile. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. My mind is being blown right now because now I'm I'm seeing that imagery within the logo now. So yeah, that's cool. 
Um, so while we're on the topic of Eric here, I showed some examples of the uh, sketch art that is just breathtaking like uh, so phenomenal I, I just showed some of the more recent ones that I really dug but there's another one that I wanted to share that I was happy to uh, reach out to Eric and uh, pretty much claim because I wanted to purchase this one and I was happy that it was available mm. uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, we Eric and I talked about that a little bit there but that just kind of shows some examples we've seen the uh, jungle drama pages early on now you see some of the sketch art and everything too, so it kind of gives you a good example of uh, what's out there for Eric. I will open it up to uh, the Crimson Cowl Comic Club members. We will cycle back to Troy because I have some more stuff for him later, but let's concentrate on Eric right now. So uh, let's start with uh, Kirby. If you had anything uh, art related, uh, anything, any questions for Eric? Well, my main question I ask everybody is <laughs> I like to know what your first published piece was. Uh, if you did do anything that got, got published, I know you, I know Eric mentioned that he wasn't into comics in the past, but you, I don't know if you would have sent anything into like a letter style page or anything like that early on in your fan art or anything art career. Sorry, could you could you repeat it? Could you could you repeat it, please? Did you ever put any type of fan art out in the world early on in your life? Troy, could you please spark like, like published in the comments? Si si tiene un arte arte en otro cómicos primeramente que oh yes yes. Uh, last year, I did a comic for the Govern here in Mexico. It was a free comic, but it was like uh, they have political topics. You, if you scroll into my Instagram, you can check check it out. But it was not much. It was about ex presidents. Uh, era más bien sobre enjuiciar a los ex presidentes mexicanos. El gobierno buscaba hacer un sondeo para enjuiciar a los expresidentes de México. Entonces decidieron hacer una historieta sobre eso. La, la verdad, Eric, es que no tenemos mucho vocabulario de cosas okay. políticas. No, pero it was like también no, political comedy. Yo no sé mis números también. No te preocupes, Troy. It's, it was I'm like sorry. a political comic book, but it was for free here in Mexico City. Okay. Cool. But that was the only comic book I did in the past. All I said, Kirby, I'm sorry to that I didn't understand. Pitch cards and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, I don't know if David or Katie, if either of you have any uh, questions for Eric at all, otherwise we can uh, jump on over. I will try to do my best, guys. <laughs> Oh, you're doing great. No you're, doing good. you're doing really, Tengo really. Una pregunta. Okay, go for it. Eric, ¿cuándo es tu colores favoritos? El azul. <laughs> and then if El we azul. get Katie or Troy, what's if your, you want to. What's your favorite colors? <laughs> or which are your favorite colors? My favorite, uh, blue and I think blue and red. Blue and red. Mm, muy bien, muy bien. Very fitting. I have a question also. Donde esta el baño? <laughs> Someone has to go to the bathroom. I know. Yes, you may. You may go to the bathroom. <laughs> Ahí está el baño. En los en Estados casa. Unidos. Todo el mundo sabe cómo decir donde está el baño, pero no <laughs> no podemos pedir mucho más que donde está el baño y dos cervezas, por favor. <laughs> Sí, sí. Uh, David, I don't know if you had anything. Uh... Well, I, I do. I do kind of want to circle back um, to something that Troy said, um, it, it, talking about the quality of his own artwork, um, where he kind of said, you know, his was was here, and he 
he needed you know like eric's that was here um and, and i've now seen quite a bit of troy's artwork and i've got to say i would look at it much more like uh, you know, may, maybe Troy's is over here and he wanted something over here. It's more of a style thing, I think. Um, you know, Troy's, like, I'm I'm blown away by a, a lot of that art. Um, but I feel like this story, um, having this other style that's not the Troy style, really fits. So it probably was a good call um, anyways in um, finding somebody else um, to do this particular um comic in in this style um but yeah. personally i don't i don't feel that that uh really says anything negative about one person's artwork versus somebody else's i think sometimes you just have to realize you know like um just just to put it in context of myself i've got things that i wouldn't even attempt to do uh, you know where i've got some things that i'm working on that i think okay i can handle this um, this artwork, but I've got other things that it's like there. There's no way I would tackle the art on it because it's just not a style that uh, that I can do. And I think that you know, looking at it that way would be probably a bit more appropriate. Although uh, from Troy's perspective, I assume it's you know like we're we're all very judgmental about our own artwork. Um, so I, I I think it probably comes from more of a place like that. But. Uh, um, well Perhaps the better way to put it, David, is that um, Eric and Danny were a better fit for the topic. Um, not to not trying to denigrate myself or anything like that, because I don't think I'm bad. I think I'm OK, um, but they're a better fit for the this project than I was. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's that that's more uh, that's probably a better way to. Uh um to to put it you know and i think um you know a lot of people would probably be faced with this the same kind of thing um and i don't know how easy it was for you to make that decision because i think a lot of people might also struggle with it and go i'm an artist i should be able to do this and really give it the attempt but um but i think you know you probably made the right call in, in doing this well as you know I have these ideas in my head of what something should be. And both Eric and Danny were both very receptive. If I requested a change, um, there was no, um, there was no sense of, uh, you know, who the heck are you? I'm the artist. I'm going to do what, what I want type of thing. Um, it was, you know, I would say, can we try it like this? And, Eric would just he'd respond with thumbs up and then an hour later he would send over a revision there was some art or some color changes and you know in fairness they weren't my changes it came from the editor or from the publisher but sent those over to Danny and just right away you know he changed them and sent them right back so um you know, they were, uh, both of them are very receptive to, um, to editing, I guess, to artistic editing, um, which is nice because not many of us artists are receptive to other people's visions. A lot of us are like, you know, no, I'm the artist. This is what I'm going to do. And, uh, so they were very, very easy to work with in that aspect. And honestly, if either one of them had said, nope, that's what it's going to be, I would have said, okay, that's what it's going to be. And, you know, would have moved on. Um, but uh, they made it very easy for me as an artist directing another group of artists um, in the fact that they were so willing to, um, you know, work with me on things. And yep, I want to acknowledge Eric there. He had used the uh, the raise hand, which I haven't seen on Zoom, but feel free to uh, whatever you need to say there. That was. I have a question for Troy. How many requests did you get about this project? How Talking many about what? your first request? Oh, uh, a lot. I don't remember how many, 
but I got an awful lot. Um, there were some that were really good, but weren't a very good fit for the project. And there was a lot that were really, really bad. And um, I don't have it in me to say, no, you're bad. Um, because they're not, nobody's art is bad in general. It's just not a good fit. So um, not remembering exactly how our conversation went, I don't remember exactly my initial thought, you know, when I got a message from you show it, you know, and I look at your account and I saw all this beautiful portrait work, I probably thought, oh, wow, he's good, but no. But then you started sending me samples and I was like, wow, you know, so um, I don't remember how many to answer your question exactly. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, but I feel like it was a lot and it was very overwhelming. And you always, you don't want to let people feel like their artwork is not good. You want to let them um, just know that it's just not the right fit, you know, for things. And uh, as it turns out, we were lucky enough to find the perfect fit for it. So thank you. Good, good. Uh, we're yeah. going to jump over to uh, Danny Harrell. Uh, we got a question for Eric yet there, Kirby? Yeah, I figure since this is basically the art portion of the show, I should get this out of the way. Uh, I only found out a couple of days ago that we were having you this weekend, so I didn't. I only had a couple hours to work on this, so <laughs> it's not great. And I only had about an hour before the show to color it, so it's a really quickly done colored uh, picture that I did up to kind of do a play on your little junk on the jungle drama book, but. Uh, <laughs> We got to uh, try and bring this in how it goes, but we got Chama with a little monkey friend that she's sitting <laughs> in a tree checking out. And I didn't see the colored artwork, so the outfits are a little changed up once you guys colored it, which I like the colored ones version better, but it, I kind of went off black and white version. But then we have Jack swinging in, kind of checking out Chama. And as he's checking out Chama, a gorilla just happens to punch him in the gut <laughs> and catch him swinging in to the picture there. Nice. But yeah, that's the the design I threw together for the show. So, Very a little cool. something. <laughs> I well wish done. I would have a little longer to work on it, but. <laughs> well done. Excellent, excellent. I may have something to show. Uh, I'll I'll show it off later because I do want to get the Danny here. Um, Jumping over to Danny, I kind of want to know what your earliest memory was with comic books and what kind of characters have you always been drawn to uh, before we even get into the creative process, just like as a comic book fan, what did you like? Yeah, uh, as a comic book fan, uh, the first book that I ever bought was a TMNT book, issue hmm. three, and uh, just kind of fell in love with that and um, always read Turtles as long as I can remember but uh, I was a big fan I was more of a fan I guess of the uh, of the indie stuff early on I uh, was a big Dark Horse fan uh, mm, yes always really loved Dark Horse uh, got into Hellboy and uh, followed that for years and the Dark Horse present stuff I would pick up those anytime that I could and uh, then later on uh started getting the dark horse conan books and mm. uh yeah i was a big fan of uh of dark horse and uh vertigo uh, a lot of the stuff i read yeah. was through vertigo and uh a lot of the i think a lot of my colorists like the the color palettes that i choose are probably shaped a lot by those uh earlier dark horse books and uh just I like a lot of the, you know, not super saturated color palettes and uh, just letting the black work and the shadows do the work for the colors. A lot of, uh, a lot of stuff like that. But I, I was always more, I guess, of a, as far as DC and Marvel, I was always more of a DC guy. Uh, really, until probably the last four or five years, I didn't read a whole lot of Marvel. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was all about 
Green Arrow is one of my favorites. Uh, you know, I named my kid Oliver, but uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Batman, uh, just anything with the Justice League. I would I've read that on and off for years, and uh, but yeah, I've always been a a big fan of uh, TMNT and Hellboy and a lot of ensemble type stories. Uh, like the Invisibles was one of my favorites, and I uh, always like Runaways and Doom Patrol, and I really like the the group. Mm, uh, yes, the yes. group comics. Yeah. Now you mentioned uh, Ninja Turtles a couple times, which is a great segue into some art that I pulled Ooh. from your uh, Instagram page, just kind of uh, showing off. Even though you are the colorist and editor on this book, you obviously have a, a lot of experience with drawing. So I wanted to go through and uh, just kind of highlight some of that stuff. Because, uh, yeah, I went through and I just kind of wanted to pick some of my favorite stuff here. And I happen to notice you have a Ooh. lot of Muppets-related stuff. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this one here <laughs> big is Muppet a uh, big, big trouble in uh, in Muppet Studio, I think you called it. Yeah. Nice. But, yeah, um, just, like, looking through all this, and that wasn't the only Muppets-related thing. So did you have anything to kind of expand on what drew you uh, to the Muppets as I queue up yet another awesome muppet mashup here nice. yeah i just uh yeah was a big fan of the the muppet the first muppet movie i've watched it so many times i think i know the, the words to all of the songs from it and uh just i watched that i had a vhs tape of it whenever i was a kid that we got from a local uh video store that was closing mm -hmm. and I, whenever it closed, I got the uh, the first Muppets movie, the first TMNT movie, and the 1966 Batman movie, and I think I watched those three videotapes until they were just completely worn out, and uh, Muppets are always just fun because, you know, you don't have to really take it mm -hmm. all that seriously, and you can do mashups with Muppets and pretty much anything, and uh, yeah, so a lot of those a lot of those pieces were things that people had commissioned and uh the the big trouble in little trying to mash up that one wasn't a commission piece that was just something that i was messing around with while i was uh listening to a uh and watching a live stream sketch show yeah and uh nice. then there's one other thing i'm going to transition into is uh with you being a colorist so here's a piece that um I think I may have Ooh. left the artist's uh, name on there. Are you familiar with uh, yeah. what the name was? Yeah, it's uh, that's one of uh, my buddy Mike Ruth's pieces. Uh, Sweet. We, uh, we've worked together on several things. I've uh, Lately, I've been doing a lot of uh, flat color stuff for him on some of the books and covers that he's worked on. And uh, we recently had one for the Dynamite book, uh, Pathfinder, Wake the Dead. Uh, mm. We did a cover or he did a cover and I did the the flats for him to where he could just go in and add the highlights and shadows and everything and kind of help him with uh, that process. And I did the same thing on uh, a book that he works on that he's the series artist for called Dodge uh, that Matt Nixon is the uh, writer on. And uh, I did the flat color for the flashback scenes in issues three and four of that one. But yeah, I love color and Mike's work. He uh, he always does all the hard work for you with uh, all of his washes and everything. There's really no questioning where the highlights and shadows need to go. It's always just just amazing work. And uh, so you you've definitely done writing, you've done art and coloring. Uh, do you think there's a one of those three that you kind of are drawn to the most or is, is it just kind of an equal yeah. thing based on the day or you know feel free to speak uh, it's on definitely definitely coloring things. yeah definitely coloring is what uh, I do more work on um, I've only I've got one book that I've written on but uh, the most of the most of my published work has been uh, doing the colorist duties and uh whether it be either just flat colors for the stuff that I do for Mike or doing colors for some of the other books that I've worked on. Uh, yeah, coloring is definitely where I, I 
do more of my comic work. I, I want to do more writing. I've uh, got some other stories that I've started on that I want to do after uh, the first story arc for Rebel Girls is finished. But uh, yeah, just have to get to got to get through Rebel Girls before I start something else. I just I don't have time to have two creator own books going at the same time. Uh, maybe not time, maybe uh, just money. I just don't have the money mm -hmm. to have two going at one time. And uh, you set up my next question, which is kind of given a pitch to this brand new series, Rebel Girls, which issue one is available Ooh. right now. And issue two is currently out for pre-order. If you can kind of give a quick elevator pitch to anybody that uh, doesn't know what Rebel Girls is. Yeah, it's about uh, three girls from Alabama that. Uh, they they play in a uh, riot girl influenced uh, punk band, and they also happen to be they were cursed from birth <laughs> by the devil <laughs> to uh, be able to resurrect the dead and conjure ghosts. And the devil has sent one of her minions in the form of a CD record executive to try to get <laughs> them to sign their souls away, and they want nothing to to do with him. So yeah, that's uh, that's where we're at with with rebel girls there's nice issue one is out issue two comes out in october on october the 18th and uh, issue two we start getting introduced to more of the zombies and uh yeah there's uh and the the, the series villain is hinted at in the first and second issue and uh get a little preview toward the end of issue two of the villain that's known as the boot scooting boogeyman <laughs> <laughs> that's an excellent name um so yeah while we stay on the topic of danny here with his uh coloring work even if anybody had any questions about his art and everything too uh feel free if any other club members if there is anything specific to danny uh looks like we'll start with kirby and then we'll go from there uh first off you mentioned it wasn't a commission is the big trouble in china picture for sale by chance um I think I still have it. I would have to look and see if I still have it. I have to flip through my portfolios. I think I do, but uh, I can't say for sure if I've All right. I'll check with you in the near that or, Yeah. <laughs> this a live art sale happened right before our eyes. I love <laughs> yeah. And then same question. Did you happen to get anything that was published or anything early on that was like your first thing to actually get out there? Yeah, the first comic that I was credited in was issue three of Dodge uh, for doing the five pages of uh, flat color and uh, which that book got published first, but I had colored two other books before that point, but they ended up, they actually got published after Dodge issue three, which I was uh, the colors for a book called Hellbringers. Uh, can't remember shattered truth i think was the name of the issue that i colored and then uh i colored a uh a graphic novel about semen so you know <laughs> there we go. i did a cover for that yeah that's how i met <laughs> troy was through a book about jizz so, yeah. it was, if, it if, was if, that's that's a, if that's not a meat cute if that's not a meat cute i don't know what it is so I mean, it's uh, it's it's a way to uh, the book is actually doesn't have anything in there that you can't really show a kid, and it was the writer of the series mm -hmm. wanted to make a comic book of how to talk to a kid when you want to give them the yeah. birds and the bees conversation in a comic form, and it's all parody of mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings and. Jay and Silent Bob are in there, and yeah, but most of it is a Lord of the Rings parody. It's got Batman as sperm. It's got uh, Lando Calgisian as one of my favorites. So, yeah. Where, where was this when I was you. going through I'm, it with my kids? <laughs> yeah. I'm not laughing at you, but I love the Lord of the Rings, but I have no idea how you'd adapt it, but I want to find out. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's, it's very uh, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the series, the the book is it's fifty two pages and it is narrated by Morgan Seaman, and uh, <laughs> it's all parody. It's very interesting and 
uh, it's a pretty funny series. <laughs> That's awesome. I I know it's supposed to be educational, but honestly, I think using a bit of tongue in cheek humor probably makes it easier to to explain yeah. that. <laughs> I I Definitely. haven't read it, but the whole time that I was drawing the cover that they gave me to do, the entire time I was chuckling. <laughs> the whole time. It's like, I'm drawing sperm. <laughs> uh, Any other questions specific for Danny before we uh, kind of cycle into the last phase of our uh, triple interview here? All right. No, I think mine's more a general question. Sounds good. Uh, we'll cycle back to Troy. Now you've talked about this, just the experience of uh, being a writer on this project and, you know, having, you know, working with a, a very well gelled team, you know, a team that came together pretty well for you. Um, can you kind of talk about the experience of like, this probably set a really good example for you to be inspired into, you know, writing other projects like is yeah, obviously, you know, you don't have to be telling us, but has the 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 gears been churning after this uh what i feel is a very successful as far as uh, a preview copy of jungle drama are you inspired to kind of try this again outside of kid slapshot comics well i would like to continue with jungle drama um mm -hmm. i think that it's a fun concept i think again the art team is they you know they mesh really well um and yeah, you know, I'd like to continue with that. As far as other things, you know, writing other projects, I don't have anything on my mind uh, at the moment, but um, I do want to, I'm hoping that it does well enough that the publisher says, yeah, let's go ahead and do another. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, is there any uh, kind of final questions for Troy at all as we kind of go through the, the final round here? Kirby? Uh, you mentioned your influences earlier and stuff, but wasn't there a little George of the Jungle in there too? It's <laughs> like, or have you never seen that yet? Oh, no, I, I've seen it. Um, I'm not sure how much I was thinking about George of the Jungle with it. Um, it was more um, taking the uh, the boy crazy elements of Archie and kind of ramping them up uh, you know, bringing them up a few notches and then throwing them into a world where everybody is scantily clad and <laughs> really well, uh, well shaped. Um, but, uh, you know, I suppose there, there may be a little bit of George of the Jungle in there. Probably the, the Brendan Fraser, George of the Jungle version yep. that, you know, that my wife still has dreams about from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> More than the cartoon. Oh, that's right. Well, it, intentional or not, I mean, there's there's a little Superman in there too. Um, you know, especially you got a character named Lana, and we used to have like you know back Silver Age and stuff like that. There was a lot of the uh, the Lois Lana, you know, after Superman, um, and that's you know I I picked up on that having uh, also being a huge Superman fan, you know. So you got that thrown in there too. Not to pop your bubble there <laughs> but uh lana's lana's original name was kanaima hmm. so chama is venezuelan slang kind of like dudette like chamo would be dude chama would be dudette so that's venezuelan slang for just hey girl you know <laughs> and then uh my wife is venezuelan uh, and then um there's a region in Venezuela called Canaima, and it was a misunderstanding by the the uh, Europeans when the the natives said the natives were saying don't go there Canaima don't go there. They're like oh that's what it's called, but they were hmm. saying that's the spirit of death. Don't go there. Oh. That Canaima was what they called the spirit of death. So she was kind of the bad guy initially going to be the bad guy. But then as we moved on, as we moved forward with it, um, it kind of was starting to become apparent that to use the name Kanaima in there was a little bit less friendly than using a name like Lana. So Chama and okay. Lana, Chama drama, Lana drama, 
they you know just names that work well with the word drama um so i'm sorry david oh uh, no that's okay that's what headcanon's for <laughs> yes so yeah we are cycling through some of the remaining art that troy had sent over showing off some pinups here are these things that are represented in the comic or just things to kind of advertise it and practice? Uh, two of them are in the comic. Uh, originally, all four of them would have been in the comic, but we had to whittle some stuff down. Um, so two of them are going to be in the comic. I don't recall which two, but people will just be surprised. Fair enough. And uh, we have Eric uh, has his hand raised over there if you want to chime in here. Yes, I think Jungle Drama has a lot of Superman in there. Uh, mm. Just as a as a fun fact, I took as insp for inspiration the Legion of Superheroes. Oh, the nice. designs for this project, I took the the leader Superman. I took as reference to design the uh, the definitive uh, drawing of Jack. Mm. There we go. Nice. So I think yes. Uh, and I, I'll say it, there. Eric's, Eric's Jack is way different from the original Jack that I that I drew and the one that I sent him. So as far as the way Jack looks, you can thank Eric for that because it, I didn't have Jack looking nearly as nice as what Eric has him looking. He made it. He did a good job on kind of redesigning him. Cool. Uh, I want to cycle back to Danny, kind of touching mostly on the editing of uh, this comic and, you know, how much experience you've had prior to this, but kind of what you did to kind of uh, kind of let people know, you know, how uh, how important editors are in the comics. A lot of people will, you know, ignore that. And I kind of want to I'm interested mm -hmm. in your contribution as an editor to this book outside of the coloring. Yeah, that uh, I guess the editing part of it was more just almost just copy editing than oh. anything else. Uh, uh, I actually worked as a, a news editor for a campus newspaper and then my background was in journalism. And uh, so Troy had just asked me to, you know, look over what he had written, look over, you know, all the dialogue and everything. So that's that's really the extent of the editing process that I did on on this book but um yeah just mostly copy editing more than anything else oh i have a question for you so i'm also a professional writer but i find myself in my present job doing technical editing and it's been a while since i've done that uh what was something that you found improved your process or maybe made the copy editing easier because that's actually my least favorite part of the job is copy editing <laughs> yeah I, I think it just kind of came with time and mostly just mm. uh with working for the the paper that I worked for I mean it was yeah we put out an issue or we put out the paper where it was weekly and uh okay so anything in the news section I had to you know go over a copy edit and uh we had several different writers sending stuff in and I think just with doing that just over and over you I got sure. better at it with time and uh but yeah, it, it had been a long time since I'd done anything like that. It had been a long time mm -hmm. since I had sit down and actually written anything in a long time uh, Okay. prior to the last couple of years. And uh, I had, uh, whenever I was in college and fresh out of college, I did some some work for a couple of uh, like classic car magazines and did oh, some sure. feature stories for those and then just freelancing for the local paper and uh so yeah, it, it was nice. It, it's been nice mm -hmm. over the past couple of years to kind of get back into writing things and, you know, yeah. even just doing the copy editing and trying to get back in the groove of things with all of it. Nice. Yeah. Sounds like it's just practice and uh, yeah. yeah, no, I know. I, I love writing. It's my favorite part of the job and even just having that not be the priority. I'm like, I miss it. I can't wait to get back into that. <laughs> well, cool. Thank you. Uh, I will just be more patient with my copy editing skills and we'll get there. <laughs> All right. Any remaining questions from anybody here at the club? Otherwise, we will move on to the last segment here. All right. 
I think that'll be good. So what I'm going to show off here, I have a list of the uh, covers. There's a lot of covers happening over at uh, the Jungle Drama uh, Printing Press here. We have a, uh, a cover A. I'm going to be popping these up here just a second. So we have a cover A here that is done by Eric Marshall. And uh, yeah, all of these comics at the time of this recording, uh, you have the uh, option to pre-order from your local comic book shop. Uh, your preferred online retailer. Uh, some comic shops also have the final order cut off, so there's time to uh, you know, request this for the release in October. Uh, we have a cover B here. There's just a lot of windows in the background here, so I'm switching back and forth. Uh, Bill uh, Welko. Walco? Is that how you pronounce it? Walco? I've always said Walco. Walco. So yeah, we got a cover B here by Bill Walco. And then jumping over to a uh, cover C, we have Craig Rousseau. We have that one here. And then uh, we're going to have a very familiar uh, artist here for our cover D. As I scroll back down, cover D for Danny, Danny Harrell. You have a cover here. Um, since you're here for it, uh, we already talked, you know, seen the preview pages from Eric and all that kind of stuff. But Looking at this cover here, uh, is there a certain approach you went to? I, I really, I, I think this one stands out over a lot of them, just with that, you know, with the context of all the, what's happening in it. If you want to speak about uh, how you approach this cover. Yeah, uh, honestly, it's just a, uh, it's a homage to one of my favorite NES Nintendo games. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, Adventure Island. Uh, oh. I think this was the cover for the box art for Adventure Island, either two or three. But uh, yeah, I just, as I started thinking about what I wanted to do for a cover, I was just looking around on the internet and uh, looking for something that might be a fun homage to it. And anytime that I think anything, you know, jungle, jungle comic type thing, mm -hmm. uh, I always think back to playing those Adventure Island games. And uh, so, yeah, whenever I was looking at the uh, box art for those, I saw the cover of uh, the one that I did the homage to on here, on that one. But yeah, I just, all of the, uh, all of the characters that I draw tend to have the same styling, whether it be my Rebel mm -hmm. Girls stuff or uh, what I did for this cover. So yeah, I just, just chose uh, Venture Island because the comic book kind of reminded me of uh, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. It's giving there. me some Cadillacs and dinosaurs vibes. <laughs> there you go. And I then like we it. have we have a uh, cover E here by oh. uh, Natsuki. Cover E. So, uh, Eric, is it okay to say who this is? Yes, her name is Natalie, but oh. her artistic name is Natsuki. Yeah, this nice. is uh, this is Eric's sister. Oh, cool. oh. they have a there is a whole lot of talent in that family. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Cool, cool. Then we have a cover F. There's so many awesome ones to choose from. Cover F here is by J. Cole Christensen. Yeah, that's cover there and uh, we're almost at the end here just have to keep cycling through cover g cover g <laughs> we have j hammond and you know for the next cover i'm about to share here i was trying so hard to find out uh, who the cover artist was for this one it just kind of I, I did a bunch of google searches and it just came up with blank searches so uh mm. but yeah this is it's a blank a... sketch cover variant <laughs> it's so, yeah, you Eric. So it's, it's you, it's you, Danny. <laughs> but yeah, feel All free to order that one up. And then finally, I don't know how you landed uh, one of the best uh, cover artists in the business because you know they 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 jumped in for at least one more cover at the end here. And Troy, can you talk about uh, hmm. how you approached uh, Troy Dungara to do this cover <laughs> for uh, Jungle Drama? I was just trying to imitate Archie. <laughs> uh, as best I could. I don't think I pulled it off that great, but I was trying to do a, uh, at least on the facial features, trying to imitate Archie and then do 
relatively cartoony for the rest of it so that it blended um and hopefully i got the vibe of like old archie comics going cool 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 so yeah, yeah definitely all of those covers are available a comic book that's coming out this october in 2023 jungle drama once again pre-order from your local comic shop your preferred online retailer but also very importantly keenspotshop.com because uh, you'll be able to order from them and have them available if you happen to miss a pre-order window from your local shop. Uh, they seem to keep a lot of that available for as long as there's inventory. So definitely check out keenspotshop.com because this is a Keenspot Entertainment uh, published book. And while you're there on keenspotshop.com, you can also search for kids slapshot issues that are in stock. Uh, Rebel Girls that we talked about, as well as the upcoming uh, issue two. And then while we're at it, because I happen to uh, get my copy uh, early in the mail, but mm -hmm. Happy Astronauts from our friends Matt Fife and Matt Rogers, book that's coming out at the end of August. Issue two is also available to pre-order in October. So there's a lot of awesome stuff coming in October from Keen Spot Entertainment. So yeah, that is going to be uh, basically, I think I exhausted all of the share screen stuff here, <laughs> pretty much went through everything. Now to kind of do some final plugs here, um, let's jump over to Eric. If there's anything you kind of want to advertise, I will put the link to your Instagram on this video and post so people can find your art. Uh, but if there's anything you want to promote, you've been doing sketch cards, uh, you know, art that's for sale, feel free to kind of promote yourself and your art. Yes, you can find me on Instagram like Eric Marshall, and then you will find my artwork, my sketch cards, my portraits, and all you want to see. Excellent. Once again, that link will uh, uh, pop up on the screen and post here so everybody can see that and uh, give Eric a follow. Danny, is there anything you would like to promote uh, for your uh, Instagram or any online presence and upcoming work? Yeah, uh, I'm on Instagram. That's where I, I post most of the stuff. It's just at Danny Harrell Art. And uh, yeah, just uh, pick up a copy of my book Rebel Girls and mm -hmm. pre-order issue two. It'll be out the week after Jungle Drama. So hmm. yeah, we've got Jungle Drama, and then the next week, Rebel Girls 2. Cool, cool, cool. Jumping over to Troy. Now, uh, at the day of this recording, you had uh, released a, a video on your social media talking about this kind of sponsorship uh, fundraising mission that you're doing. Uh, if you want to speak on that, and this is your oh. uh, space to advertise to uh, all of the listeners and viewers on kind of what you're doing with these uh, Archie sketches. Okay, well, um, I guess before that, want to encourage people definitely to go and get Jungle Drama and Rebel Girls. Both of those are really great. And uh, the more attention that uh, Danny, Eric, uh, Danny, the team of Danny and Eric get, the better off everybody will be because that'll tell the publisher that um, you guys want to see more of that stuff. Um, on uh, on the side note, at Tunes by Troy, that's my um my Instagram tunes with the Z. I posted this morning that I would like to start doing Archie exclusive covers and to fundraise for that. The first one is uh, it's already a done deal. It's happening, but um, sure would be nice to have fundraising, take care of the payment instead of me taking care of the payment. So yeah. I'm going to be doing some um, head shots or bust shots of your favorite Archie character in cosplay. So dressed up is whatever you'd like to see them dressed up as. They're going to be nine by twelve. Uh, shipping to the U.S. is included. Uh, Thirty dollars for the uh, the drawing, and uh, of course you can choose whatever you want uh, them to be dressed as. I got the Archie Encyclopedia from uh, Dan Parent at Tidewater Comic Con. So there's not a single Archie character that you can hit me with that I won't know what they look like. So I can. Uh, I can hook you up if that's the kind of thing you're interested in. Um, much less expensive than my typical commissions. Uh, these are 30, including shipping. If you're outside of the U.S., hit me up. You know, we'll figure out the shipping for you. Uh, but inside of the U.S., shipping is free. And, um, you know, Somebody hopefully... Somebody commissioned this man to do uh, Reggie as Red Sonia. Yeah. Ooh, good idea. <laughs> Reggie as Red Sonia would be hilarious. 
<laughs> you know, that wasn't planned because that was the perfect segue into the next thing. Now, by the time this gets released, there won't be too much time for voting, but I do like want to spotlight for those people that do uh, check the feed right away. Uh, so uh, yourself and Matt Rogers of Happy Astronaut and Cartoonist by Night have uh, entered a uh, submission here for a Red Sonia contest. If you want to speak mm -hmm. on that real quick. Yeah. Uh, also, Danny has one too. Look, Is that right? Uh, maybe future, future Anthony, maybe you can get Danny's up there too. People, but are, looking, uh, people are looking at it right now. So let's all ooh and ah at Danny's Red Sonia. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ah. Hey. Go ahead. <laughs> So uh, Threadless, the uh, print-to-order t-shirt company, mm -hmm. along along with the folks that own the uh, the IP for Red Sonia, are doing a contest um, for uh, a cover. So the winner gets, uh, I think, $500 and a cover for Red Sonia. Um, and uh, I don't remember what the other places get, but I want to say it's something like you, they're going to license your artwork and then... You know, as they sell T-shirts with your artwork on it, you'll get a portion. I don't recall exactly. Probably get uh, a like, year supply of turtle wax, you know, the normal stuff that you would expect. Yeah, the Jam of the Month Club sent to your house every every month, that kind of thing. The Gift entire, that keeps you know, on giving. Encyclopedia Britannica, you know, A through Z and all that. So. <laughs> That's right. Good, good. That's right. And then uh, one more plug for you, uh, Troy, because you do have a brand new Kid Slapshot issue that is coming out in September, if you want to speak on that, and that will uh, roll us out on the plugs here. Well, um, ordering is already finished on that, but you can still get it at uh, keenspotshop.com if your local comic shop doesn't have them. Uh, sometimes the uh, distributors will order more than uh, the orders that were placed. So first bet, the first thing you should always do is check with your local comic shop. You will always want to support them as best you can. Um, if your local comic shop doesn't have it, keenspotshop.com uh, will have it for you. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, that's all the plugs for our creators here. And uh, before we go out, I have one other thing that was in front of me here, because I too uh, decided to uh, just drop Ooh. some uh, little fan art here of... Uh, Nice. Lana and Chama there. So I got them just kind of hanging out. You know, this is before they're about to, you know, fight over the same jungle guy. So this is, you know, you see some moments of friendship in there. And this is just one of those mm -hmm. moments before it gets real scary out there. So, so yeah, wanted to whip that one up there too. So yeah, that is going to do it. Once again, check out Jungle Drama. We'll be actually talking about it in our next uh, Crimson mm -hmm. episode for the previews as well to advertise this interview but yeah this was fun it was a big yeah. uh, it was a big task to have uh not just one not but two but three comic creators all on at the same time and kind of spotlight on this and it was so awesome mm -hmm. to have you all on board and uh hopefully we can do it again whether it's for more jungle drama or any other projects everybody is always welcome yeah. back to the club whether they're advertising anything or they just want to talk about the latest Superman comic or yeah. maybe there's, you know, a new Muppet series that comes out and, you know, Danny needs a platform to talk about the Muppets and Ninja Turtles. You know, everybody is always welcome to come back to the Crimson Cowl Comic Club. So yes. yeah. Cool. cool. And that is going to do it for this episode. Since this is a solo creator spotlight episode. We don't have much of a sign off other than maybe David saying something. With his buttery voice. Say something buttery, David. To the be pressure. Continued. The pressure. <laughs> to be continued. Nice. <laughs>
Happy and his pal, a robotic stowaway named Half, are on a mission. Find whoever stole Half's missing pieces and get those pieces back. After promising each other that they'd pursue even the faintest of clues to the furthest of corners, our spacefaring duo have bounced from one adventure to the next, hoping that eventually they'll end up in the right place at the right time. Their next stop, a tiny little oasis on a giant planet of star spewing volcanoes, a place where robots melt and humans bake and magic-imbued stars rule the land, or so they think. Happy Astronaut is perfect for readers of all ages, filled with action, humor, and heart. This debut issue will have many exciting covers to choose from, including a blank sketch cover variant to commission your very own cover, 